Good morning. On behalf of Energy Management Institute of the Energy Management Center, a warm welcome to this program. EMC, as you may know that the Department of Power, the Government of Kerala is a state designated agency of Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Government of India, to promote energy efficiency and energy construction activities on the provision of Energy Construction Act 2001 in the Kerala state. We may agree that the technological trends in energy efficiency and the sustainable development be, are being introduced in the industries through which a drastic reduction in their energy consumption profile are attachable, resulting in attachment of remarkable energy or energy savings. Most of the industries use thermal energy as the most important energy sources of, for production process and allied accelerated process. Boilers and waste heat recovery are major equipment used in the industries. Performance of the boiler like efficiency and evaporation ratio reduce the time due to poor uh, combustion. Heat, water and quality also lead to the poor performance of the boiler. Efficiency testing help us to find out how boiler efficiency drift from the energy efficiency, large quantity of hot Food gas generated in the boilers, kin, ovens, and furnaces. It also reduces the waste heat could be recovered, considered amount of preliminary fuel could be can be saved. Today's faculty, Mr. M. G. Gapure, the today's speaker, he is a graduate chemical engineering from LIT Nagpur on uh, the year 1978. He obtained both the MDEC and a PhD from Mumbai IIT. He is a professional experience in 30 years. He has some overseas experience in the British industries, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Middle East, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Mali, and Togo. He is a resource person of energy efficiency, code of Bureau of Energy Efficiency, piping, dryers, uh, gasification, and uh, co generation system. He is also a member of advisory committee of Thane Polytechnic and Medda. Mr. Gapure represented India SARC Summit on Energy and he has honored the Institute of Engineers for outstanding combustion in the energy sector 2011. The digital platform for this program hosting the webinar provided by the Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management Kerala. Concerning COVID-19 scenario, EMC has organized a series of webinars on various topics. The first of his topic was started on 5th June. The webinar calendar was prepared and we are, uh, published the EMC website. If you could have any doubt during the webinar, you need not wait to, till the end of the week. You have a public chat box in the platform. Some of your doubts may be not be cleared at the time of itself, but the EMC, the people can complete the question and get the answer from the people to prepare the FAQ book letter. The booklet can be, will be shared at the end of the participant by email. This uh, program is fruitful to all of you. The program, myself, uh, Johnson Daniel, I am heading the Energy Efficiency Division of Energy Management Center. A warm welcome to all of you once again. Thank you. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us? Hello? We can hear it. We can hear it. We can hear it. Yes. So we go back to first slide. Yes, yes. Uh, the first yeah. slide is. There. Good morning to you all. I am Dr. Garpur speaking from Bombay. Yes. And uh, uh, today's uh, title of my seminar is. Uh, hmm. It's uh, MSME, ESCO, Economizer, Scrubber, and ZLD. So all are uh, uh, short forms or uh, something of that kind because I, I did not want to know what action we ex we can expect from this seminar uh, because everybody will be coming from different background. But uh, I will tell you my typical difficulty here. It's like selling um, hearing machines to deaf people. So when you talk about deaf people, naturally they don't hear you. And uh, uh, if you want to sell the machines, then you have to sell it to somebody who is around them. Because 
uh, the really person who needs it is not uh, getting into it at all. I mean, I mean, he cannot know about it. He cannot know the benefits of it. He cannot know. He, in fact, he is not even aware of what exactly it means. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, it is audible, sir. Okay. You can continue. Sir. Okay. So I'll continue because I'm not seeing any display here. Uh, I will. I have my own slide, so I will go as per that. Yes, sir. Any uh, any interference means mean, uh, I am here. I will I will update you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. No, I I am not seeing any display here. That is a problem. Uh, the PPT so, okay. is visible. The PPT. Uh, so, uh, we are now on slide number three, which is. Uh, uh, I think the slides. Uh, uh, I think this is the first slide. So success of my presentation will be sales made through you and efficiency achieved. So you you will become an efficiency seller in the whole process. Uh, first, I will take you to small medium enterprise characteristics. That is slide number four. Next slide, please. In the, if you when you visit a small medium enterprise, you whatever you have learned about energy audits, data collection, analysis, everything will go away. Because you will find that there is no such compartmentalization in small scale industries. It is like uh, two, three key persons are moving around. They do all the jobs from banking to technical to. Um, Yeah, that's sir. Hello, are you there? We cannot hear you, sir. Hello, Garpreet sir. Are you there? Yeah, I, I can hear you, but yes, now it is in the fourth slide. I will do one thing. I will change the slide for you, sir. Hello, Garpreet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. You can continue. Okay. Uh, so, small medium enterprise. Hello? Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there is no compartment as such. We ask somebody who has such questions to uh, energy auditors, like what is boiler capacity, what is efficiency of which it is operating, how much steam do you produce, uh, what is the capital budget allocation. So they look at each other. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, typically, so uh, basically, as you know, that time uh, inside that uh, hello time inside the somehow I am getting echo. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, we can hear your voice, sir. Okay. No problem. I mean, I can have mono dialogue, mono long. Uh, so it is uh, It's like a typical setup will be there won't be too much of infrastructure. It will be typical single funnel package boiler with varying load, solid fuel usage, usage. So there will be so much variation, and there will be a lot of apprehension of key persons, including owner, for theoretician coming inside like you. So first doubt they will have is it coming from engineering or technology because they develop the technology over the years and their whole business and existence is dependent on it. So they don't like to part with it very easily. And therefore uh, they will say that as far as possible avoid any uh, theoretician coming to the company. Uh, then you will talk about how much is the 
data about consumption they will have so much of wood coming in so much of wood coal coming in so much of and it will be written in some 200 page notebook and payments are getting sir uh, sir i think there is some audio issue from your end the voice is breaking sir garpre sir hello garpre sir hello the, your voice is breaking sir the all working fine but till the system got loaded hey you know the don't see technology hmm no they just invent technologies Hello sir some emergency is coming and your voice is also not clear wait
mic testing 1 2 3 can you hear now hello yes we can hear now yes we can hear sir sir please go ahead hello yeah yes, we can we can hear you sir yeah now we go to slide number 4 where we saw that how uh, what kind of scene will be there in small scale industry that is seen now go ahead and uh, that there will be uh, no compartmentalization there will be two three persons who matter in any small industry so you have to go with uh, appointment because those persons may look very simple and they will be very casual about meeting and all that but they are quite busy so uh, you have to remember that if you don't go with questions which you want to address parat band ho jaye um if, if if you ask them some questions which for which they have no answers they will say okay you collected yourself and then you will be into a problem so therefore some things you can conclude on their behalf because they are typically uh, one more point which uh, small medium industry has to address is um, occasional demands because their main sales will be during diwali onam or during uh, this uh, Uh, Ramzan. So basically, they can't fall short during that time because that is the time where they do 80% of the business in the 20%. So their peak load should not get affected. That is their first requirement, and that one has to understand when you go there. Uh, next thing, which is uh, typical. So should I make it slide? Slide five. so when when you go there naturally there is doubt about why is he coming is he coming to learn his technology rather than t- telling him how to improve efficiency then he says my daily variation is so much that sometimes there can be 1 to 5 i have written but it could be even 1 to 20% variation then fourth question which will come to his mind is who will pay if it fails because whatever gadget you are going to suggest maybe economizer or whatever they, they are worried about failing it and their failing in the market is much bigger loss than compared to the equipment failing so you may say that okay uh, wifi did not work but then if i was to be uh, paid for this uh, seminar and i don't then then i'm very finicky about wifi it's that sort of situation uh, anyway uh, we continue with this modern gadgetry and then learn about it so similarly those industries are also improving and they also learn to live with modern uh, this thing modern gadgets so then sometimes uh, uh, he feels that um, in, uh, normally small scale industries will be asked to install a scrubber and that's because uh, chimney which gets out of his uh, uh, factory and uh, uh, when the smoke is coming out lot of people make noise in the in his town so a uh, problem is uh, how to address that issue because he says my worry is not about boiler fuel cost its efficiency or steel production and documentation of what is going on but my worry is simple this chimney should not give smoke so earlier uh, uh, saying that when there is a smoke there is a fire he says that's fine but now i want fire without smoke so this is the new age requirement and that is how you have to adjust then another worry which bugs him is normally zero discharge uh, compulsion because what water he throws out is not acceptable by pollution control board because they say some of you some recycle and reuse and don't throw any water out so that there is no trouble of uh, treating it or having any uh, uh, factor related to it so uh, the last question which he will ask for is will investment give me payback because he knows that finally on the balance sheet whatever assets uh, energy recovery assets that are going to come will always uh, be an asset so it's not an expense so that way he is very uh, i mean uh, very liberal for accepting the investment now i go to the next slide so people thought that okay these are the difficulties of msme so why not finance them with their so much apprehension about or they find it risky then someone else um, some uh, established sector takes the risk of uh, giving him the equipment and then there will be three 
uh, one project proponent, then one user, and one bank. So that banks uh, can provide him finance, provide finance to the project proponent. Project proponent installs it, and then uh, whole thing works. So there will be business for project proponent. There will be business for bank. There will be business for equipment manufacturer, and there will be. I mean, this uh, will be more sustainable. That is how normally we uh, get into idea of uh, uh, ESCO, which is energy service company, which means that subject expertise is with project proponent or um, equipment manufacturer, and user gets the benefit of saving the energy, and uh, uh, he shares the money through which he gives that lease rent or say, shared savings to banks, and finally the asset becomes his after a certain period. So it looks fine on paper. Um, but there are hurdles because rates of fuel fluctuate and payback may become longer to the energy service company group. And uh, on that there is no control. So although banks wanted fine uh, structure that okay, so many years, so much of uh, interest and all that. But then as soon as the rates uh, of fuel fluctuate, the savings uh, go down. For example, wood might be at, at one time bagas was available minus 50 rupees per ton. That is, people were giving 50 rupees to take it out from sugar mill. Now, even at 2100 per ton paying, you are not assured of supply because things have changed, uh, energy scene changes. So, if you have looking for seven years period, then in seven years, as you know, a um, few days back, there was negative price for um, given crude oil. So it, it happens because uh, uh, this fuel business is very tricky business. And uh, uh, therefore, there is a lot of uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty kind of thing where your measurement error can lead to catastrophic de and, uh, decisions. And therefore, you have to go with a, s a solution which uh, probably is attractive to him and he cannot say no to the whole situation. But he is deaf. As I told you, it is like sharing, sh uh, selling hearing machine to a deaf person. He doesn't know what is the best for him. What is what is what does it mean uh, when someone says sound? So it's uh, it's problematic, and uh, that is how you have to get into it and then talk about his language, his problems, and uh, what he broadly agrees is that okay if my water is boiling at about 170 degrees in the boiler exhaust gases are going out to 220 degrees centigrade and out of this probably up to 160 you can 120 you can go down on this temperature so you can say about three to four percent of fuel that is what will be the word which will be commonly understood rather than going about uh, too much about measurement of temperature then o2 and then finding out excess air and then talking to him about why there is so much excess air he says whatever is there is there and i need to put that id fan on if I keep it off, then the pressure starts dropping. So I am burning the ID fan as it is. I don't have any means of controlling it, and that is how uh, this whole system is running. Secondly, if you uh, make a mistake that you give some theoretically designed uh, uh, economizer to recover that heat, then as choking, if there is a, there are horizontal fins, then it will definitely choke. So you have to give vertical fins and on top of it you have to give a sonic suit blower also for um, making sure that it is sustainable otherwise typical problem what happens is you put the equipment then for two months or three months it runs fine then it gets choked and after choking his worry is not about your equip uh, your uh, lost loss in efficiency the choking or any small cross section starts throttling his boiler's uh, fire, I mean burning capability and that is what he cannot produce steam which he used to generate. So then he will throw it off. I mean he doesn't even care about what happens to the investment. Then another two of his arguments which are unbeatable is why it was not included by boiler manufacturer because uh, somehow there is a trust that boiler manufacturer is also very educated fellow. He deals with boiler house, he deals with drawings, he deals with fabrication. So he has got all the know. -how. So he should have made uh, this uh, economizer as part of, uh, yeah, I mean, recovery of uh, exhaust gas uh, heat as part of boiler. But um, then there is a reality, economic reality, because in boiler field, the 
uh, there is such a tough price war that boiler costs are coming down to around first ton will be around 15 to 18 and then it will be 8, 8 lakhs per ton so 15 lakhs uh, per ton and then 8 lakhs per ton so you will be surprised to know that in boiler one month in one month equal to capital the fuel is burned so even three percent four percent improvement is a big improvement as for any stand from any standard and then uh, he says that if you can include my other necessities from pollution angle that is scrubber and uh, uh, zero liquid discharge we should uh, package all the three so all those engineers who wish to make a career in small scale industry in uh, thermal field should have knowledge about not only economizer when you are uh, to have energy efficiency but and esco only that uh, i mean um, concept uh, for financing but you should have knowledge about scrubber you should have knowledge about zero liquid discharge and it's, there is a need to package all three together to address their all issues as soon as you say scrubber naturally many of the non chemical engineers would say this is this seems to be complicated because but i can tell you that none of the gases are uh, colored like co it first out will come on co that there is the less air and that is why you see dark smoke and uh, uh, because of that uh, you will find that there is a uh, dark uh, dark smoke coming out of chimney but co is colorless CO2 is colorless, hydrogen is colorless, nitrogen is colorless, oxygen is colorless, water vapors are colorless. So then what exactly gives the opacity at the smoke? It is basically particulate matter which is flying at the velocity of around 5 meters per second. That is what goes out as from the chimney. And this problem, once you address him, then they will, then uh, the auditor or um, consultant will be valued above the boiler manufacturer because boiler manufacturer also could be hunting around that it, uh, smoke normally doesn't come but then when you fire it comes then when the load is less that time it is coming so there is no question about having less uh, air also so the once you solve the his problem of scrubber plus this now let's look at the scrubber uh, this uh, typically is the economizer layout which uh, I have included. So suppose there is a boiler of package type. Then we install above the boiler in that boiler house itself an economizer which is about one and a half meter height and uh, then take the ash out from it in removable form because if you don't keep it removable then when you clean the boiler tubes that will come in the way. So there should be soot blower, sonic soot blower, there should be removable ash uh, uh, ducts which go and are sealed at the bottom and then there should be minimum um, minimum ducting which is there so if you have uh, uh, economizer then it should be bypassable also in the similar duct so this uh, this type of layout is necessary if you try to say that no I will uh, because you, you may land up in spending more on ducting rather than in economizer and uh, Payback period for this is pretty simple. You normally save around 5 to 6 percent. That is, if it's a two tonner boiler, you save about 700 kgs of fuel per day, which gives him 10 lakh saving very easily. But his problem is never about 10 lakh. If you start uh, talking too much about it, he gets, uh, he says that that's not my real problem. My real problem is about uh, continuing with this boiler chimney exhaust to be kept in control. And that is where he needs your help. So uh, when you want to make a scrubber, then it will follow this uh, economizer which we have proposed. And that will come, and that is exactly like human nose, inverted human nose. So on uh, figure you see on the right side, the first, first uh, sketch. In the right side you see a human nose kind of thing. It's of course inverted uh, because if you have observed then uh, you can uh, those who are in this uh, grain mill, like Atta, Atta Gachaki, who are me, he is peacefully staying with all dusty particulate matter uh, for years together. Because nature has provided us with a nose which is wet, and that wet uh, nose captures fine particles and then it is blown out. So, similarly, you capture them in an inverted nose because gas duct will be coming from top, so you cannot keep it just nose like because it's not open to air. Uh, so you have to, uh, whatever duct comes, that will go onto one uh, venturi scrubber. 
and uh, in that venturi there will be only wetness at the wall so there will be very small drizzle it, it is not like scrubbing with uh, shower or anything it's it just and uh, trickles down water trickles down the conical portion and gases particles are made wet and then they stick to water and then with water they come down and then you need to settle them or filter them as per the need and next slide shows better version of it so a more compact version of it uh, this is i mean similar venturi is similar then you put plates to take out the mist because once you wet the gases which are coming at about 115 260 degrees centigrade that time you have to have uh, uh, i mean lot of uh, at that uh, condition lot of mist get carried so to break that mist you have you need a baffle type of uh, uh, separator otherwise it will become like that moisture will go to chimney and then chimney will start uh, oozing out water and people don't want such type of uh, further hatches when you will say what is there you can just keep the flange of the bottom of the chimney open and then water comes out of it but then it creates a sort of a muddy situation there and everybody will say uh, what this design is not good because it creates a lot of muddy space around when everybody shoes will get dirty and all that so instead of that you have give a mist eliminator which is a baffle type so you have seen that simple engineering of a um, package boiler which is which looks pretty crude and pretty primary equipment where you put wood or coal or briquet on some stationary grid and then give air from the bottom and then there is ID fan at which handles gases at about 250 degrees centigrade and then that, that's the simplest setup. It consumes around 60 to 70 lakhs in any small equipment, in any small industry, um, uh, rupees per year and therefore it's a very um, great opportunity for all budding entrepreneurs or engineers or consultants or uh, so and so uh, to educate them to improve the environment also the so next week is after removal of particles because you have got you have, uh, you say you have ordered about half a kg of ash which was being spewed out as particles from the chimney because normally a half a kg would be per hour would be the maximum it would be going out so that half a half a kg would soon make that liquid completely i mean uh, muddy so what is done is uh, in that uh, after scrubbing whatever water comes is it will come in open tank and then there will be settling spaces given and then the water will be separated and recirculated and from each compartment you can drain it out on uh, a cotton type of filter which is polyester basically these days so because water becomes hot over the uh, reuse and this at about 90 degrees centigrade so you take it on the polyester cloth filter allow it to be there so because there is no hurry of filtration so it stays there the entire cake gets drained out of water and then then you can take out the cake as ash and dispose it of with coal ash which is normally uh, throwing out uh, which main ash is getting separated below the grid which he, on which he fires the fuel so uh, you have disposed ash completely you have reused water not much of water is required maybe uh, at least 200 300 liters per day makeup would be necessary in this main tank so that is that is all that is needed for this uh, uh, scrubber why we have to give scrubber because although this does not mean energy conservation in fact it might mean slight amount of energy uh, i mean killing energy because whatever was going at 120 now it will start going at maybe 95 or 100 degrees centigrade and it will consume water but unless this is done the first equipment legality starts coming into uh, question and therefore this equipment along with uh, economizer can uh, save a lot of money and give confidence to him a third issue is related to zero liquid discharge which is very uh, new concept uh, in iso and all that and everybody wants to do something about it because nobody likes to spoil water and give it to outside because of his industry first thing it's very uh, legal because if water starts going out it may contain some harmful uh, uh, ingredients which can kill fish and once if you have seen dead fish 
coming out of anything, then you will yourself will say that this is not tolerable. I mean, it, it doesn't require a statutory authority to say that. As a common man, as an educated person in the society, everybody will agree that this is not tolerable. And therefore, uh, you need a um, solution control board. What it says is that it's impossible for us to give solution. Somehow, if you can have recirculate water inside your premises, uh, uh, then um, it's better. So there are conventional equipments like uh, multiple effective operators, uh, your uh, permeable membranes, RO, RO systems, which are popular. But then they have a limitation that they can go up to 4 or 5% 5, 5 of solids, and then they don't work because osmotic pressure goes up too much. So therefore, there is a new concept called the mechanical vapor recompression, in which Basically, what we want is recover water in liquid phase. So we don't need to create vapors. Whereas multiple effect evaporator, I mean, irrespective of how many effects it has, it still will have a condenser, and that means uh, some water will go to a cooling tower makeup, and that that will be net demand. But whereas there is a concept called mechanical vapor recompression, where whatever vapor is produced in this uh, uh, figure, you can see. Whatever vapor is produced is recompressed uh, by a blower, not uh, not a compressor of air compressor kind. Uh, you uh, have a head rise only by five five meters, and then maybe at 70 degrees, vapors which are generated, which are compressed to maybe 74, 75, and that is supplied as heating media in the jacket. So this is perpetual motion machine kind of thing with some. Uh, losses are being made by mechanical power of electricity, which is the job of both uh, pressurizing the vapor uh, uh, which is generated so that it has a higher temperature than the boiling. So it goes at 75. And with that small delta T, of course, you need a very large heat transfer area. So everybody is keen to use it because operating cost of this uh, zero liquid discharge system by this route is the minimum. But the problem is this is not very proven uh, route and many people have uh, messed it up because uh, if there is a boiling point rise phenomena you know, due to alkali or anything in the liquid, then there is limitation to use of this uh, equipment. But everybody likes to see if, if this fails then there are conventional methods. But first thing should be this because there is no mess around, there is no cooling tower attachment, there is no it's only electrical and uh, technically it can be a very compact equipment instead of uh, operate and you don't need operator also for this. So it's simple and that is why everybody is attracted. So we pack all these three together. Like uh, as I said, uh, you go for economizer which is normal, normal heat exchanger, um, fin tube heat exchanger with vertical fins and suit blower. Then you go for scrubber which which makes sure that you can use coal, you can use uh, briquettes, you can use wood without you know, having uh, a smoke in the chimney. And then third one is you, we give, uh, we can give this uh, for a demo purpose because many people are there who say, okay, you try, because even uh, equipment suppliers cannot anticipate whether the equipment will work or not. So they uh, say that we'll, you give us advance and we'll give you it for uh, experimentation for five days, ten days time, and then they charge for uh, rain. So if a person buys two things from us, like uh, economizer and uh, scrubber, then depending on his uh, good behavior, we can uh, give this uh, to him on trial basis uh, by taking some deposit. And then uh, if he can get away with all his problems, then that uh, uh, person running a uh, uh, small medium enterprise will say that yes, now this time uh, theoreticians work and they are they have given me correct solution. Uh, so we come to the last slide, which is conclusion. Uh, weakness of MSMEs are converted to strength because because decisions can be very fast and single decision will ensure satisfactory schemes and address all its concerns. And uh, financing after two, three success stories should be easily available because government is open, money is available. The uh, link between uh, MSME and uh, uh, banks has to be established and it can be established by coupling all these three issues together.
you cannot talk only of energy and its efficiency or its contribution and kilo calories unless the person knows for sure that now we can work with this good fuel or uh, old fuel or briquettes for very long time sustainably he won't look at uh, any energy saving opportunity on those equipment he says that okay this simpler form is better for me and that's why you need to address all three issues and these three issues are a challenge to uh, engineers because okay what i have given you is a preliminary uh, this thing people have to work more on that after it's put in the field uh, we have put lot of engineer scrubbers we have put economizers so on those two issues there is not much of a problem the there they will remain a suspense for many years to come because because of their complications because if he if he has got alkaline a uh, effluent then naturally boiling point goes up so much that we cannot work or if we can have sodium sulfate we can have whatever i mean technically there are so many chemicals that i can keep on talking about them so now the path for going into msme what to talk about for uh, putting up economizer rubber and uh, this explain i conclude my lecture sorry for uh, holding you during uh, some technology hiccups in the earlier phase now i, I hope you could uh, hear and you can ask questions i want to follow the question because we want to make this we uh, as salesman for such technologies not necessarily my brand but uh, you should be able to sell the efficiency more um, assertively and uh, more uh, Uh, compassionately with the msme because they they will lag in practically all what you ask they won't have details about boiler they don't have a lot of details about fuel consumption all they will say all they will say is that we have faith in you now you work so uh, in that case you have to give a complete solution thank you uh thank you gurpreet sir uh, for your valuable time thank you uh, yes sir yes sir uh, i can we will share some a few questions uh, which are uh, the participants have uh, asked in the chat box so okay. Uh, okay sir the first question is which scrubber uh, sri uh, venkatesh has asked the uh, which scrubber is good uh, is it wet or dry and uh, what is the selection criteria to choose scrubber uh, uh, or el for electrostatic precipitator or back filter uh practically there is a id fan and chimney draft at 100 degree centigrade will be good enough for sucking the sample this this scrubber practically will give about uh, 25 mm uh, resistance but normally id fan current and speed will be able to take that unless there is a cyclone also after the id fan so if you have cyclone before this then that will be additional 125 mm so Uh, total will be about 150 mm so you have to make sure that see basically id fans uh, id fan can adjust to much higher pressure drop if you can change the pulley so just for that small electricity electrical consumption uh, you can include that pulley expenses in the basic scheme and give it to him that if it is required we should keep it ready because it becomes sometimes two three days delay or 10 days delay in the project so it's better to keep a pulley a good question i mean this will definitely have some pressure drop and uh, uh, venturi is not very small it's not like few uh, mm it will be like 200 mm 300 mm 500 mm kind of thing so it's not although it's called venturi it is only shape that is it is in gradual cross section reduction it's not very small uh Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there is one more question from Sri uh, uh, Girish. Uh, can you tell uh, more about waste heat recovery? Can you tell more about uh, this waste heat recovery? Yes, the waste heat recovery uh, is very uh, the, the concept which we, we used to uh, learn in this energy auditor concept. So most of the uh, some thermal energy projects we propose the waste heat recovery. So can you? Uh, that, that will become a very broad topic. I have talked about waste heat recovery from boiler because that is pretty simple. The uh, temperatures will be definitely 220 to 230, or it can be lower than that. 
and maybe 192 to 30 is normal temperature. Uh, but if you talk about wasted recovery in general, it can come out of maybe uh, mechanical in the, uh, metallurgical industries where it can come at 900, then you can have wasted boiler or you can have a hot oil unit or you can have uh, uh, this uh, uh, absorption machines. So there are a lot of, I mean, uh, once you say waste heat recovery, then, then you have to define, is it 400 degrees waste heat, 1000 degrees waste heat, like if you burn sulfur or getting SO2 for your process of sulfuric acid, then you will get gases at 1000 degrees centigrade. So whole, uh, I mean, there is a waste heat boiler, which can be even power boiler. And then uh, there are a lot of schemes, I mean, basically, uh, Generally, talking about waste heat boiler will be difficult. That's why this was easy. The boiler uh, exhaust gas, which comes at 230 centigrade centigrade around. And that from that, if you can heat feed water, then nothing like it. Because uh, it gives a better uh, response to the boiler, response of steam generation in the boiler. Because hotter the water comes in, um, the subdue, subduing of uh, evaporation process is less. So you get good response from the boiler and sometimes MSM is like that part much more than uh, energy conservation and all that. This is now I can, my pressure is more steady. So wasted uh, recovery, we, it's a long topic actually. I mean, if it is 400 degrees centigrade in your host of options, like whether you go for hot oil unit, it depends on the, where exactly they want to use it back. Normally, air breathing is the first one which will come in all other uh, issues when uh, uh, steam generation is not there because steam and water go together. Whereas air and combustion equipment, they go together like in metallurgy and all that because this, there is no water vapor generation there. So if it is wasted uh, recovery alone, then it can be in air form. Here what we have talked about is boilers exhaust heat recovery with what into heating water. So that is more congruent rather than uh, making a mixture. I mean, uh, there can be hybrid installations, but uh, then they would, be, would have to be very big. Then it won't be in lakhs. It can go in crores or like uh, uh, if you have some uh, rolling mill exhaust coming out from various units, then it can go for a very uh, big project. And it needs a special study. It cannot be discussed in general. Like this is general small scale MSME related topic. So I am stuck to only boiler and uh, its uh, heat recovery in the form of hot water. Is it okay? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, as you said, this waste heat recovery is a very, uh, very uh, huge topic. So a lot of things has to be considered during the design and where we have to use to recover heat. So there is one more question uh, from Dr. Vinay Senve. What would be the total investment and payback for all the three solutions? I think the three solutions you have explained. What is the total investment are, and payback? Yeah, yeah, we are thinking yes. about uh, nine, 9 lakhs for one ton, 10 lakhs for uh, two ton, and three, uh, 11 lakhs for uh, three tonner boiler. Because uh, uh, such package boilers have limitation. I mean, they will be only of these capacities. So 9, 10 and 11. So you can say 10 lakhs is normal budget. And out of which they will be recurring 5 lakhs every year. But uh, the other two, uh, that is ZLD and uh, this uh, scrubber, they don't save money. So uh, 5 lakhs for uh, scrubber and 5 lakhs for uh, uh, economizer. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, then before I go to the next question, uh, there is a small announcement. Uh, we have shared the uh, 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 Google Form uh, feedback link to share your valuable feedback. All the participants uh, kindly uh, fill the uh, feedback form. It is very uh, simple one. I can just uh, one, uh, just few questions you have asked. So uh, just give the feedback uh, writing. Uh, in the uh, URL shared in the chat box. Then uh, we'll go to the third question. Sri uh, Srikan Kante has asked, this ID fund uh, will have to have variable speed drive to overcome the problem you are suggesting. Pardon? Sorry, sir, I will repeat the question. Sri Srikan Kante has asked, this ID fan, uh, induced draft fan, 
will have to have variable speed drive to overcome the problem you are suggesting. So yeah, possible, but uh, I think fully should be good enough. Because variable speed drive, you have to understand the whole dichotomy of, uh, I mean, the anatomy of this small medium enterprise. There, there won't be any electronics engineer content. If difficulties come, then they will bypass. Once they know that there is a bypass, then they will run on bypass all the time. So instead of spending so much on uh, uh, variable speed drive, if pulley, pulley can be given, because ID fans are very rarely direct driven. So they will have one attachment which is possible, which is uh, via pulley. And pulleys are available maybe in 3,000, 4,000, then boring, etc. will take, maybe the cost will go to 8,000, 10,000. But they are simple to see, right? They will have one more set of pulley. So they like such uh, uh, assets rather than something which is electronics and which may work, which may not work. Because when you supply such equipment, then you, are, you have to take the responsibility of running it round the clock. And if that happens, if that uh, variable speed drive doesn't work due to, say, low voltage during uh, festival season or something, then you had it. I mean, then you are out forever. Then that person loses confidence in energy saving activity itself. And it's justified because he has missed the season because of some uh, lofty aims in the energy. I will prefer for small people, uh, pulley change is better than uh, this thing because pulley, they know that, okay, you just have to hammer this in and then put the belts again and then it works. So they have more faith, they would normally have more faith in this rather than on, uh, I mean, we, we find regulator kind of thing very easy. But when it comes to maybe 15 kilowatt or 30 kilowatt uh, ID fans, then uh, if it goes wrong, even I won't touch it. I mean, I will also call the specialist, like because they need to be programmed. They need to you have to understand so many things of it that uh, such people who are very uh, busy in their routine activities itself, they don't like to take in something which is not in their line. Okay, uh, Dr. Sir. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I will. One last question. Uh, Sri Vishwas Pradesh has asked uh, How can we uh, optimize? How can we optimize the excess air in the actual yeah. condition? How can we optimize excess air? Excess air, yeah. yeah. The excess air in the actual condition. No, never do that with solid fuels because solid fuels, basically if fuel is coming continuously, then you can uh, uh, optimize air. But here, anyway, fuel is fired um, uh, in uh, lots. I mean, he will see the pressure, then he will take out ash, then he will fire the new fuel. So every about half an hour, and there will be a firing. So he has to open the door, take out the ash, because two, three things he, have to, he has to do in solid fuel fired boilers. It's not only uh, fuel to air management. And then when in the, in the initial period when volatiles come, that time you require very high amount of air. And uh, since surface area is limited, sometimes telling him to cut down on air, if you tell him that, okay, you can optimize this, he will say, okay, come on, let's do it. And then there is a problem because uh, you cannot have even VFD after every fire being set up in a programmable manner that initially there will be high air and then it will start going down because uh, air also does two, three jobs in this. Although we normally as an auditor uh, blame the excess air for loss of uh, fuel into exhaust heat. But uh, it, it also gives a lot of turbulence at the bed and that turbulence if it is uh, reduced, then combustion doesn't take place because uh, if you have seen the ash diffusion mode of combustion, then ash needs to be brushed out from the surface which is glowing, and that can uh, uh, that that uh, maintains the combustion rate. If you go theoretically about uh, optimizing air, then it doesn't work in small industries because uh, fuel is practically fed in alley coats. And uh, every half an hour, you will have to have something which is programmed every half an hour or when he starts firing, that time it should come on and all that. So that is practically impossible with, within that budget. Is it okay? 
okay sir okay uh, thank you for uh, that answer sir uh, we thank have uh, yeah sir um, uh, this uh, i think there is no questions from the participant side i once again uh, request all the participants to fill the feedback uh, we have the link we have shared then uh, one small concern from my side uh, sir uh, what is the prospect of uh, this esco uh, in that we can uh, bring in kerala as an sda uh, we are as acting as an sda for uh, this bureau of energy efficiency uh, in kerala so uh, i think in kerala we have only a few escos so uh, this um, here the in kerala we have a, a good sort of msmes also coming up the uh, large industries are very less we have a lot of msmes so here uh, the this funding is also a problem uh the, so uh, we, we have a very uh, less funding here so uh, uh, how can this esco help uh, the, to change the situation in kerala so if you if you were able to get some local economizer manufacturer or water operator manufacturer probably he can do good job because he will have confidence in the local one because see msme as i told you they look at you with suspicion like why what is the purpose of your over doing it if it is my interest i will do it and uh, i know my interest well that is that is how those are deaf to uh, uh, other theories whereas if if there is a uh, economizer manufacturer or water operator manufacturer around and if he goes there saying that okay he is he is established as uh, heat exchanger manufacturer finally it's a heat exchanger and um, if you solve his difficulty then one or two success stories after that it will pick up because if one competitor does it the other people will know that there is no point in wasting money in uh, letting the gases go at 230 degrees centigrade everybody will now then the 160 degrees will become a new standard so you have to wait for it i mean it cannot happen suddenly in the msmes because they are not typically attracted by uh, Uh, financing someone else they say okay we have we have our production machines financed by bank so we know all that procedure this is one more machine so that same team will try to do it and then they will uh, mess it up because okay they have not taken care of uh, this uh, uh, suit blower and finally again when smoke comes this just because scrubber is not there someone will put finger uh, when show finger at them so if you address uh, probably the whole three issues then they will say okay now at least i am covered from all angles because if you put a economizer with uh, cdb finance or through some such forum and then if uh, coal gets banned in that area and then they, they say that okay now you make sure that people go on hsd then uh, the he will say i have lost now not only the boiler but also this new investment that that becomes a typical question which becomes uh, unanswerable for uh, all the three i mean bank cdb the project proponent and everybody third second thing which i would i would say that uh, what should be promoted in small scale industry is if there are surplus assets because many companies get formed but they sometimes don't uh, run so if we can have some good boiler of the large surface area or two furnaces or uh, such area which is uh, which can which someone like a consultant can match okay you lift the boiler from there then uh, cdb or etc should be convinced for uh, surplus equipment use so suppose there is a heat exchanger available somewhere so if that is available at uh, maybe scrap price and then you put it up for uh, use after reconditioning it and making sure that it works for this new plant then it will give good returns for everybody then it will be much more than banking returns of some percentage it can be times so you can have five times uh, every year or something because final investment is uh, if investment goes to one fifth value that is a fabricated item comes at about 150 rupees a kg and scrap you get at 12 rupees naturally it will have 12 times the uh, Uh, return so uh, if you can convince that okay your old equipment also would be allowed and I, i i know that it's difficult to get it in in that time time frame which people normally talk about but msmes typically don't like to bargain later they will say okay include everything in cost and give it to me i am okay with it 
yes sir yeah uh, thank you sir technical difficulties are stopping the esco becoming popular in this because technically there is no i mean theoretically there is no objection to uh, uh, esco as a concept because it's a profit which is being shared but msmes have typical problem due to which they don't even think of it Uh, yes, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, your answer. Sir, uh, there is one more question in the chat box. I will read it. Sri Srikant Pandey has asked, sir, uh, will HSD or LSD? The uh, I think it is high speed diesel or low speed diesel will be compulsory soon in arena in present scenario. I did not get the question. Uh, I will read the question once again. Sri Srikanth Pandey, yes, ask, sir, uh, will HSD or LSD be compulsory soon in arena in present scenario? Yeah, but uh, what about cost? Finally, kilo calories, what you get in uh, HSD will be say 86 divided by 8600. So you are getting only 100. Uh, 8600 divided by 86. That will be hardly 100 kilo calories per rupee. So even if it is efficient, finally you will be able to transmit 80 kilo calories per rupee. Whereas with solid fuels, you you can go up to 450, 400, 700, up to 700 sometimes. So um, finally it will be nine times costlier all these uh, refined uh, distillate fuels. So it looks nice, but then on pocket it's very heavy. Uh, if you have very uh, non-continuous use, like you are operating only two hours a day, then I will suggest you go for uh, HSD fire because starting time, then manpower expenses, then ash disposal, and everything will become uh, much bigger effort than using diesel. So if you are limiting three, four hours and consumption does not cross, let's say, 100 liters per day, then it's better to stay in uh, uh, diesel than... Uh, I mean, and in such a situation, diesel is okay. Otherwise, there is no fun in burning money. Because finally, you have to uh, put it not only in efficiency terms; it has to finally be translated into money terms. Okay. And okay. Uh, there is one more question. Yeah. We in today's yes, ask uh, request you to please share uh, where we have to use scrubber. Electrostatic precipitator and back filter. Yeah, I did not get uh, back pressure for back pressure. What do you have to do? Uh, I I will uh, sh repeat the question, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, request you to please share where we have to use scrubber or electrostatic precipitator or back filter. Okay. Uh, he wants the comparison of uh, scrubber. Uh, this is uh, a uh, electronic uh, this thing charging base, charge base, and third is uh, this uh, back filter. Uh, this is more common because uh, I mean scrubber is best way to put it because uh, sometimes what happens is uh, uh, flying things are hot because they are coming at around 230 to 40 degrees centigrade. These embers are sometimes uh, sitting on the back. And when they catch fire, because where you uh, blow air, that time they fall down, but then they are still burning. So if they if they catch fire, the all the bags go. So it's not only one bag going as uh, whatever is burning there, but uh, all the bags go. That's why bag filters are not very popular. Then they are square type construction, so they take a lot of space. And uh, people prefer to give space for such equipment outside the boiler house. So that becomes another problem. Then compressor consumption of a bag house is a problem. Uh, then uh, you have uh, uh, in electrostatic precipitators, if you have big budget and if you are thinking too much about uh, uh, very large boilers, then they are okay. But uh, it needs to be dry. And finally, they need transformers, they need everything. So uh, let's not copy that because uh, scrubber is a more uh, simple and uh, uh, easy to use equipment rather than because every everything is seen there there is no technology in it whereas in uh, back filters you need to uh, have air to displace uh, from the bags uh, this ash and then at that uh, from the bottom of that ash pit i mean where ash comes out there are normally star walls and 
through that star uh, walls air comes in and then that air and hot uh, uh, fuel embers they suddenly um, blow uh, glow and then then they, that creates fire inside the uh, back filter so it's pretty common that the back filters have fire in them people feel that it is coming from boiler side but basically it comes from uh, due to combustion inside the uh, back house so and once the bags go out then uh, replacing all the bags it becomes very costly and slightly risky procedure because in boiler everything finally uh, is hot and uh, you cannot suddenly say that okay now repair it immediately whereas in this uh, uh, scrubber there are no issues like water is there which is anyway uh, reduces the heat i mean the heat part of it i mean temperature part of it so i i will prefer that you go for uh, scrubber because that is the ultimate it's 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 undoubtedly accepted material i mean because human knows as you know if nature had given us bags then we would have been breathing through bags if nature has given only wet uh, venturi scrubber we are breathing through venturi scrubber so follow the nature for small scale industry rather than having engineering excellence they believe in okay this is simple this is okay workable that's what is my feel i mean you can you can always argue about i mean the big size uh, projects also i mean in big size project this may not go well but uh, for small scale industry this is uh, wet scrubber is the best option thank you okay thank you sir uh, there is one more question from yeah. sri uh, adil eshad uh, he is asking how long does a scrubber work with its maximum efficiency the scrubber typically has no efficiency it is just trapping this as long as water keeps coming and wetting the particles and taking it down it will work there is no efficiency part for the scrubber as such because uh, finally what does it have to do it is just like sprinkling water and making them wet and then taking them out so uh, and in removal of particles this is the ultimate equipment so you cannot get any better equipment than this that is also certain and that's why i said uh, uh, see human uh, lungs are so sensitive that even dust laden and slight amount goes you start hiccuping or uh, you start sneezing so uh, basically uh very small particles as i said finally the person in that uh, grain mill is there without any of the back filter or any of the electrostatic precipitator attached to his nose he prefers simply that again okay, bio bio mechanism takes care of it because it's a inverted nose kind of thing and venturi scrubber is actually inverted nose is it okay Oh yeah, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the um, uh, time, sir. Uh, um, okay, I think there is uh, no questions further. So okay, thank you. We will. Uh, yeah, it was a very uh, useful and uh, it was very uh, good session. Uh, from great, great, yeah. So we so, uh, will go for the um, closing remarks. Then, uh, yeah. So uh, this session was about the. Uh, primarily we were giving importance to the uh, expo route in kerala so we, we as i mentioned in kerala we have a very few expo so uh, this energy efficiency uh, which can be achieved through that uh, method uh, by uh, uh, expo expo financing uh, it will be a prime concern for us, for an sd also so yeah. uh, as uh, continuing to this uh, this was our first session on energy efficiency through expo that is on boilers and waste heat recovery then uh, we will continue this series uh, in september uh, again we will be coming with another uh, issue of this is major joining there because i know some of the uh, i mean since it be has already worked on some with some of the uh, progressive msmes yes, they, yes, yes. they are normally the person who has already dealt with sirbi uh, um, they are okay i mean they they go for it i mean because they know that it may make sense for them yes yes sir you are right sir in september we are again coming with the same uh, series energy efficiency through escorot uh, session, session number 
we will be dealing with the uh, possibilities of esco financing in street light projects uh, led street light uh, not only led the energy efficient street lights including uh, daylight control everything all technologies will come then after that we will be uh, having another session on same uh, esco concept on uh, building energy efficiency so uh, that will be more of electrical sorry sir yes yes that will be more of electrical Yes, yes. I, I think some sessions till thermal also will come. Uh, I think some okay, yeah. Yeah, sessions. Yeah. Bali electrical is more popular. Yes, yes, yes. yes. In, in more of uh, in Kerala we have uh, more of buildings, no? Yeah, so, hotels and buildings and yes, malls. Yes. And, uh, so, uh, sir, uh, in uh, actually we have started this uh, webinar series on fifth uh, of uh, June with uh, this one um, uh, building energy efficiency. On uh, we have started the program. So we are continuing like that. I think most of the participants have got the brochures, including our program calendar, and uh, uh, we will continue with such uh, sessions, which are uh, ma mainly focused on energy efficiency and energy conservation. And uh, may we will be having our next session on 17th. Uh, I think it is on energy efficiency in Syria. So uh, after that, we 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 are planning on a session on uh, this uh, energy efficiency in transport sector. in that uh, we are again having a series of six webinars uh, which are concentrated on uh, electric vehicles uh, and electric vehicle charging infrastructure uh, so uh, there are also some uh, models we have implemented so that also we will share the case study so we look forward the participants uh, to uh, be uh, with us in the coming sessions also so i thank uh, dr garpre sir uh, to have his valuable time to uh, uh, address uh, his uh, his discussion about this uh, some interruption happened during the beginning of the session due, due to some connectivity issue so uh, uh, any inconvenience please be respected so uh, next time onwards we will ensure this uh, uh, yeah hopefully <laughs> thank you garpre uh, sir yeah, this, this sir cannot be anticipated i mean <laughs> this <laughs> work yeah, fine yes sir i i think you, you will uh, uh, keep coordinating with us with this sure. thing with your initial there so i can i can bank on this otherwise normally i am a old man who can prefer a personal uh, presence yes, rather than a digital presence okay no problem i mean we have yes, to get sir, we will a digital presence okay no problem i mean we have yes, to get sir, we will